Hey guys, Script over here with another video, and this is one I missed, and I know other people have covered it, whatever. I want to give my take, though, because there's some stuff in here and, that I have noticed just skimming it that is just... <laughs> and this is, you know, the Leslie Headland apology to her, where she's trying to explain all this stuff, and in her explanations and her defense of this show, that where the media, including Michael Walsh in this article, is starting to press her a little bit. Uh, she's starting to break in some ways, and some of it's not making any sense at all. And it, again, it goes back to what I've been saying for the last two weeks. I don't think she had any clue what she was doing. I don't think she had any plan. I think her focus was strictly on the message and on her own personal worldview and DEI and all of those things. And I think the focus was so heavily put on that that she did not write a coherent story. Even even if you think it breaks lore, or and even if you think it's... Uh, anti sort of Star Wars in that sense, which it is in a lot of ways. But even without that, even 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 if that wasn't the case, it's not a coherent story, is what I've been saying, and that's the problem. And so now she's going to try to explain these things. Walsh asks, at what point in the creative process for the acolyte did the Virgins become such an important part of the story? Now this Virgins, that's you know, remember when Qui Gon was like, oh, I felt a Virgins in the Force, and that was Anakin, and blah 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 blah. And I mean, I said in my last video that I wasn't that hung up about them creating these girls in terms of how it affects Anakin because it's it's different in the sense that the witches use the force to make the girls whereas Anakin just was the force made Anakin so he's still spe more special in my opinion when we crafted the storyline of this sort of Davis O Russell's Three Kings version of the Jedi being stuck on this planet once we cracked that as a plot point where a lot of other things were going to come from, it felt like the North Star for them had to be something incredibly important. It couldn't just be that they were on a planet on a routine mission. It had to be something that was arduous, a little boring, but ultimately had an end point that would establish stakes for any Jedi that came in contact with the Virgins. Well, the thing is, though, is you sent a bunch of Jedi with metal detectors and giant Ghostbuster you know, ghost packs <laughs> to collect a bunch of samples. I mean, you could have just done a flyover. I, I don't get it. I don't get like, this is a droid job or a flyover job. If you remember in, in uh, Empire Strikes Back, when Luke is flying his X-Wing over Dagobah and he's like, Oh, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I can pick up cities. I can pick up life forms. I can pick up uh, just with his X-Wing. And so, but, but you're sending a bunch of Jedi to just walk around taking samples for weeks on end seems like a bit of a waste to me with all the resources that you should have um, in the in the Republic's you know, sort of the height of the Republic and they should have no problem sending a bunch of droids down there to collect those samples and then maybe you send the Jedi when you find something that matters so right off the bat the whole storyline is ridiculous that the Jedi are even doing this there must be more important things to do. There must be some criminals to deal with or something. Uh, once we broke up, broke episode three and seven, we decided that Brendock had to be a location of a virgins for a couple different reasons. One for the motivation of the Jedi in terms of their mission. So basically, she decided that she wanted the Jedi on this planet and, and needed a reason, and then thought about, oh, there's a virgins. That's why they're there because they had to be there to, so that one of them could see the kids, right? Oh, but what are they doing there? There has to be a reason. Oh, it's a virgins. So the first thing that came into her mind was what Obi Wan or what Qui Gon said about Anakin in the Phantom Menace. Which, I mean, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just if you wanted them there so bad? There's a million different ways you could have made that happen. But there's but there is actually more. But it's not as simple as that. She does she does think further than that, as we'll see later in this article. But it's not necessarily in a good way. Uh, and while they're on Brendock in the first place, we also felt it was very important the witches had found that planet. Because their power alone would not match an outside threat. They would need to have the augmentation or the amplification of the virgins. Of a virgins. We did not want the witches to just automatically be as powerful as Jedi. So they're, they are powerful because of the virgins. So the, what? So the witches use the force because of the virgins on this planet. I never thought of a virgins as a planet anyway. I always thought of it as like like a happening. You know, like it, it was a happening and Qui-Gon senses it around Anakin because it was something that happened that involved Anakin. I never thought of it as like a planetary 
thing. So that's a that's a new thing in Star Wars, I guess, that we have well, I don't. I don't I consider this nonsense, but the virgins of planets. We did not want the witches to just automatically be as powerful as Jedi. So the virgins makes you more powerful, but then it would make the Jedi more powerful too, though, wouldn't it? If they were there. So then they still would be more powerful than the witches. Like if it raises the force powers of anyone who's there and you're already a Jedi master, then or even a Padawan, then you're just going to be that much more powerful. So, it wouldn't matter? They still wouldn't be as powerful as Jedi anyway? Because they would be way more powerful, right? Like, that... I don't think she thought this through, man. Like, the, she's not super intelligent. The witches need to feel like a nomadic community that had finally found a place that would not only give them shelter and protection, but would also grant them more and more power and control over their ability. But what was the motivation for that, though? Like... Why were the witches motivated to enhance their force power? Or did they not have any force power and just went there? But would also grant them more and more power and control over their ability. So I guess they did have a certain degree of force ability. But what? But again, what's the motivation? Go, go lock yourself away. I guess she said they weren't accepted by the galaxy or some stupid thing. Uh, anyways, my backstory to the Witches of Brendock is where they are is is that Torben mentions it's an old mining company. So I sort of imagine that it's a little bit like John Carpenter's The Thing, right? There are all these miners there. They are drilling. They find something and everybody was gone. And the next thing you know, 50, 60, 100 years later, this coven moves in. A couple years later after that, the Jedi start to move there. It's almost like a magnet that that's pulling these characters towards it. Well, that makes things really easy, I guess, from a writing standpoint. If you don't have to give clear-cut reasons, you can just say, oh, there's a Vergence, everybody go to the Vergence. <laughs> you don't have, that's a quick explanation, there's a Vergence, there's no, there's no, you know, you didn't have to say that, oh, you know, the witches, you know, they, they were under fire from something on another planet and managed to escape through whatever and, and, so, and the... the their ship crashed on Brendock. It, it was they were very fortunate that how many of them survived. Oh, no, it's just oh, there's, there's virgins, man. So people go there. <laughs> this makes it really, really easy, and that seems to be sort of the classic thing with these Disney writers is they take the the least resistant path in terms of writing. They're kind of like squirrels. <laughs> They'll go the, the path of least resistance. <laughs> A lot of different narrative reasons to put it there as opposed to after the fact. Oh, also, let's explore this cool aspect of the Star Wars vocabulary. A virgins can hide Force-sensitive people. Is that the reason that the Coven chose that planet? I ask because I want to know what came first. They found the planet, they moved there, and then decided to create the girls, or they moved to Brendok specifically to create the girls. Oh, this would be interesting. It's a really good question. It's also a backwards question because we haven't confirmed that the witches created them. Yes, we... What? Anisea... Okay, the one lady literally says... Darth Mom literally says, I carried them. And then is like, but I created them. So that was that a lie? Were they both like... And they were talking... It was just them two in the room. It wasn't like they had to put on a show for somebody else. So they're just like... Were they just lying to each other, even though they both know exactly what happened, even though no one else is around? That doesn't make any sense, Leslie. I think she's just... she. I think that question stumped her, and she realized, this is stupid. What, how do I answer this? What do I do? I gotta get out of here. I gotta just get... Okay, we, we don't know yet. There's an episode left. I think that, honestly, I think that's what, what this is. I want to know what comes first. Did they move the planet? And I always said, you know, I've said in my reviews of some of these episodes, if they moved there... To make these girls, for what purpose? Like, to keep the coven alive? You know, you can you can find lots of... Like, how long has this coven been in existence? If they don't involve procreation, how it's, it can only be, you know, as old as the oldest person in it, right? Because they can't have kids. <laughs> so if you did go there on purpose, like, hey, whatever, I guess that's your way of having a kid without involving something I guess you don't want to involve, <laughs> I guess... But then, if you happened upon Brendock, but you were always thinking in your mind, how are we going to keep the coven going long term, you probably would have considered 
somebody in the coven, you know, taking one for the team and going into a planet that had some dudes, right? So, again, it's the whole thing's really stupid. And I think she, yeah, that's why she answered this way. Oh, we, we don't even know if they created them. Ha, 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 ha. We probably did one of those awkward, insecure laughs like that live interview she did with, with the Mary Sue. Because she's just, she can't explain her story because her story's really, really bad. And then they just, see, he lets her off the hook, though, fair enough. But yes, 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 obviously yes, it's intimated very strongly, that's what happened. I believe that the former is true for the coven, and the latter is true for Anisea. I think Anisea, not unlike Vernestra, they ha- they are these very compelling leaders that have very intense senses of foresight, and Anisea was always thought of as this religious figure that gained followers more and more as she moved out into the world. So the latter is true for Anisea. Anisea moved there specifically to create the girls, is what she's saying. But the rest of them just move there and then decide it. Whatever. It's stupid. It's just so stupid. And no, Vernestra's a plank of wood. I will give Anisea at least there's there's some acting going on. At least she's, like, got a little bit of range. Vernestra's literally a plank of wood. That's uh, Hed- Hedlund's girlfriend or wife or whatever. Literally, they gained followers more and more she moved out into the world. Where, though? Like, you never explain where they're from or how they came to be they're just on this planet and then i think it was at the opening the prologue that they wrote up or whatever at the beginning said something about they were rejected by the galaxy or something like that i mean you didn't really explain that leslie so for her i think she always sort of knew that she needed to settle somewhere in order to bring to to fruition not a grand scheme but what the next step of her journey would have been the height of her powers i think she also knew that at some point utilizing the extent of her powers that her destruction would come pretty soon after that so she's alluding to the idea that so so something happened so there was some hyperspace accident of course nothing gets explained and then however many years later this planet has a virgins and then, but and anisea was so smart that she knew that's where to go to this planet in the outer rim that has nothing to do with the republic and everything else that happened to have this hyperspace accident that again we don't even know what that even means i don't it's not believable it's not believable to me they they needed to explain it better they needed to give more detail it's not it's not believable when you just say yeah this just happened because it happened and you don't explain exactly what went on of all the stupid crap they've done in this show like at least explain something that has to do with this because this is nonsense Vernestra having a similar experience of something of something will tip the scale. She's understanding they have this destiny. They believe that they have the destination spiritually. Vernestra is putting the pieces together for herself that this is it. This is what's coming. Not unlike Anisea, what's coming is going to be the fulfillment of that particular destiny. From what I've heard for the rumors for the last episode, Vernestra's destiny sounds pretty crappy. So... I guess we'll find out. Uh, he asks, Virgences have played an important part in Star Wars since the original trilogy, even if not everyone is familiar with the term, but there are different types. What can you tell us specifically about the nature of the Virgins on Brendock? This is a very this is very important to me, Dave Filoni and to Pablo Hidalgo, that the girls are not a Virgins. You certainly made it seem that way in the show. The girls themselves are not a Virgins in the Force. They needed, again, how, however they got here, the act of creating them was going to need amplification. Therefore, we came around to the decision that the Virgins was on Brendock and that it would remain mysterious so that... So that way, if we went back there in the future tellings of the story, we could uncover a little bit more about what is actually there. It was important that this type of Virgins was a natural one as opposed to within a, a human being or an alien. <laughs> Anakin's wasn't unnatural. In fact, it was more natural because it was the Force doing it. <laughs> this is totally unnatural because this is a bunch of witches using black magic in the dark side. So they're using a virgence that is unnatural. It was formed by a hyperspace accident. They're using the dark side, which is unnatural. What, what are you talking about? It was completely natural with Anakin. It was an unexplainable natural phenomenon. <laughs> Shmi, it just happened. Like, what? This is what I mean, guys. I don't think she thought any of this through. None of them did. I think they were just like, ah, Leslie, make your, make your show, Leslie. We love you. We don't care what you do. Cause I mean, how many of us have questioned, like, how this even got greenlit? I, I don't know how it got greenlit. So 
This that she's just making things up. She doesn't even know. Like, no, that's not natural. You're the uh, saying the opposite because from what we get with the show is the witches created them. You're saying that we don't know that yet. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. I just it, it, no. This makes no sense. Okay, this is not even my question. It, it is souls. The twins. Where did they come from? How were they created? Ha 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 ha. Well, uh, tune in next week. Also, subscribe to Disney Plus. Tune in next week. Tune in next week. We definitely aren't going to leave you hanging. You do a show like this. You take a lot of risks. You don't really save a lot of those types of questions for season two. There are a lot of things you have to do for season two, but that kind of question is not one of them. Now, going back to here, though, she says they needed amplification. So this goes back to the the first paragraph, the first answer she gave. So this vergence is on this planet and amplifies your force powers. Okay. So, but it didn't amplify the Jedi's force powers, which doesn't make any sense um, because she didn't think that through. So, Anasea, to be able to make these kids, needed the amplification. She didn't have the power to do it. So, again, you would think that as soon as the Jedi landed, they'd be like, holy crap, man, our force powers are crazy here. Somebody send a message to Yoda and the council. We got to make sure that uh, we, 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 we have some control over this here. This is nuts. None of this makes any sense. She did not think any of this through. Do you know if you're definitely getting a season two? No. Ha 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 ha. I had to ask. I have no idea. Well, not that I have no idea. I would say there are conversations and I don't know what will happen. I don't know when that decision will be made. Do you want a season two? Let me know in the comment section. <laughs> and, or, or, and, and that includes, do you just want a season two just to make fun of it like I do? NSA's ability to be in Torben's mind while physically existing in the real world was very reminiscent of Mother Talzin's powers. He was Anas as was NSA's ability to change her corporal form into shadows. You've talked about your love and appreciation of the Night Sisters before. Were those powers directly inspired by Talzin? Absolutely, Talzin is a figure that looms really large in the Star Wars for me. On the Clone Wars, obviously, I responded to them immediately because it was more Star Wars content. No, you responded to them immediately because it was not like Star Wars. It was like generic magic, and you're into that stuff. It was George Star Wars content. Yeah, and yeah, George did approve it. I don't I don't like that. I think George approved a whole bunch of stupid crap in the Clone Wars that it creates huge problems and more questions than answers. But he went along with it, and it's I think that's a crying shame, but whatever. But I was blown away by the Night Sisters arc, Asajj's storyline. I was just like, hold on, this can happen. This is in Star Wars. I love the character design. I love the differentiation between the, their powers and the Jedi's powers. It was all just really great. Yeah, the Jedi, are, the Jedi use mystery, and the Force is mysterious, and surrounds us, and blah, blah, blah. And the witches are using literal green cloud magic that we've seen in a thousand other movies. So in making this show, I knew one of the first things I wanted to take a look at was creating my own version of witches, because I think the Night Sisters are a bit more mercenary. The Acolytes witches, I think, basically want to stay out of everyone's way and aren't grasping for any sort of power. Which is it, Leslie? You're saying Anasea went there for the because of the virgins. Then she used the power, and then she actually even says to Osha, I think it's in like the the third episode, it's all about power and who gets to wield it. What are you talking about? Like again, I she doesn't even know what her own show is about. She can't even explain her own show. I've been saying this for weeks now. She is just like way off in left field i don't know if it's like they're just snorting all day when they're filming this thing and have no idea what they're doing and then now they're like she literally contradicted herself two minutes after what she previously said about anisea wanting to go there because there's a virgins and using the power therein to amplify her power so that she could make the twins oh they're not, they're not, they're not doing that any power and then she anisea literally talks about how it's all about power Oh my gosh, Leslie Headland is a disaster. I cannot believe. But but those of us that have been saying this, like we all, you know, there's a whole bunch of us that have been saying this long before the show came out. That why was this person chosen to do this when their whole background is other types of stuff like drama and very sort of sexually oriented drama shows? That's her background. Why would she be doing Star Wars? It doesn't make any sense other than she's just Kathleen Kennedy's buddy, or or you know she was. Uh, Harvey Weinstein's assistant, maybe she knows a lot of stuff about a lot of other Hollywood guys, and so it's like, guys, give me what I want, or, you know, there's going to be problems, you know, who knows, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense, and you're going to see the same problems and the same stupidity with Obeyed Shinoi, 
whose background has nothing to do with this type of stuff. There's nothing wrong with what she does, her, her documentaries and stuff. Absolutely nothing wrong with them. I think she won an Oscar for one of her, her documentaries. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But it's not Star Wars. She has no background in this type of stuff. So she has no business. So she's going to uh, make a movie that isn't very good. <laughs> it's going to have a lot of problems just like this does. And Leslie Headland doesn't even know what this show is about. And she's contradicting herself in the exact same interview. <laughs> even though it's her show. Wow. They're not getting involved in any kind of political or any political skirmish or any war movement. Well, they, they however, they do seem to have war preparation. I mean, when, when uh, Darth Mom is like, prepare for battle or whatever, they all get prepared and they're all lined up and they have their bows and they're all ready to fight. Like, I mean, they obviously have some warring acumen. So, I mean, it, uh, she's just... She doesn't even know her own story, her own characters. That would be the last thing they would want to do. No. No, Darth Mom was, like, all about it. All Anasea had to say was, you can take Osha, and nothing would have happened in that seventh episode. Nothing. Nothing would have happened. But she doesn't say it. She lets her her wife go off the deep end and get the whole coven ready for battle and, and brandishing weapons to kill Jedi. And then her wife... It, it, pulls out her staff against Torben, and she still doesn't say, it's okay, it's okay, guys, 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 just take Osha. She allows this to happen and a bunch of violence to happen. And then, because of that, Darth Mom turns into a fart cloud and goes into Chewie's uncle, and then Chewie's uncle starts swinging, and, and there's more violence. So what are you talking about, Leslie? Nothing you're saying makes any sense at all. We are watching a different show than you think you made. It's so frustrating that you have any business being involved in this. Because you, you clearly didn't put enough care in it to even remember what your own show is. You don't even know about the details of your own show. Oh, so very different, but still echoing and calling back to the influences that those characters had on me. The Night Sisters. No wonder this show sucks. That's my personal opinion. I know some of you guys like them. I can't stand them. The only, like, I can't stand them in the sense of, like, just generic magic in Star Wars. I do kind of like the the one from Jedi Fallen Order. Marin, I think her name is. As a character, I like her. I just don't like the Night Witches. Like, it's dumb. I just think it takes away from Star Wars. So, yeah, there you go. So, she's writing a story based on her love of the Night Sisters, which I don't like at all. So, no wonder I think this show sucks. But she should still know what her show's about. Whether I like it or not. <laughs> in terms of their specific powers, how are the Acolytes witches different from the Night Sisters? The Night Sisters utilize magic exclusively. With my witches, it's a bit of a hybrid. They're definitely dabbling in the Force and calling the Force by a different name. They're trying to cultivate their sensitivity to it without having to be trained by the Jedi. Is that even possible? They, they called it the Thread... <laughs> and you pull the thread and you can change... the history it's just corny man but i also think that in the ascension ceremony you see how they're utilizing not just wherever the virgins may be physically on the planet but the eclipse yeah i when i watched that i i was like who cares about this eclipse why does this even matter i just thought it was like part of the ceremony like oh we do the we do the you're a witch ceremony when there's an eclipse i didn't think of it as anything more than that and the show did not exemplify it as being anything more than that these powerful movements of heavily, heavenly bodies and whatever's underneath the earth, that type of thing, what is meant to be expressed there <laughs> is that they are drawing their power from nature, magic and the force, so we never sort of go, they're using magic the way the Night Sisters are, they're using the force even though they're not Jedi. Well, I kind of thought that a little bit, but I was always like, it's dark side, so it's unnatural, and then I found out it was a hyperspace accident, so... Now it's totally unnatural. And you keep saying it's natural, Leslie, but you wrote in that it isn't. <laughs> so if you, that's, what you, that's what you were going for. You should have probably not written what you wrote. Because you have conveyed the message that it was entirely unnatural. And yet you're trying to convince us in an interview that it's natural. It's not an, even remotely natural in any way, shape, or form. Anakin was natural. It just happened. This was not natural. But, I mean, you do you, Leslie. Like, we're stupid and we, we can't watch the show and figure out that you're full of crap in this interview. To me, it felt more interesting to show a group of people, a group of witches, having abilities that the Jedi could not pinpoint. 
The, the Jedi weren't going, oh, well, that's magic. Oh, well, that's the Force. That's one of the reasons they get so thrown off by what they're seeing. It's so unpredictable, and it's difficult for them to categorize and then report back to the Council. I still think they would have reported back, though. Like, hey, man, we're on this planet, and yeah, we found, we, you know, there's a virgins here, and yeah, there's these witches here. But they didn't know that because the virgins didn't affect them. It only affected the witches because it's natural. <laughs> <laughs> right, Leslie? It makes perfect sense. <laughs> it didn't enhance their force powers, only the witches. It's just, it's just it's so stupid. It's just, it's just, this is written by, this is like a, this is like if like a, like an eight-year-old wrote it. The, <laughs> the Jedi are trying to get as much information as they can, but each time they interact with the witches, they're getting different impressions of what the Coven is doing. But you would still report that, though. You would still, hey man, this is what's going, this is my daily log, guys, and you send that back. You'd still, you'd still do that. You'd still do that. I mean, even astronauts do that. I mean, the most, the most mundane thing might have happened that day, but they still report it. You report everything. Going into this episode, the show definitely suggested the Jedi might have done something truly terrible on Brendock, but I think this episode showed that all of their actions were either genuinely noble, totally defensible, or at least understandable mistakes. What was the thematic purpose of, a, of raising the possibility of hidden Jedi crimes if you were going to reveal they were flawed rather than evil? Uh, well, I'll wait for the next episode, folks. I'm so glad it read that way for you. In other words, that wasn't what I was trying to convey, even though that's what I conveyed. Because I'm an awesome person at making shows and movies. It's a show about the bad guys in every sense of that word. No, it's not. We never see... We hardly see the bad guys. Unless you're saying if the witches are bad guys, then sure. And because my previous work before coming into the Star Wars world was almost always considered with some sort of morality, immorality, or amorality, it was always about characters running through a spectrum of those things as opposed to having a good character and a bad character. Yeah, because you're a moral relativist. And Star Wars is all about good and bad. Always has been. Uh, I guess you didn't talk to George Lucas or never watched Star Wars and weren't really a fan. A good girl and a bad girl, a nice guy and a womanizer. That these characters could be all of those things at once was important to me. I'm glad that you got that impression from watching the episode that the Jedi are not performing evil acts. They're not being willfully oppressive. They're not manipulating or tricking anyone. So if the show with all the other characters is exploring the spectrum of morality, the stranger being a great example, may being a great example, it felt to me like the Jedi also had to have that particular treatment. The Jedi could not be part of the thematic element of the show. No, no, no. There, there's no spectrum of uh, uh, murdering people. Leslie. And this is her thing, like the moral relativist idea. I've spoken about this before with her and with a lot of Disney stuff. And I knew she was going to do this. She alluded to it long before the show came out that, oh, well, you know, she called Kamir, the stranger, she called him, he represents counterculture. Because when you're a moral relativist, counterculture can involve violence. And you kill people that don't agree with you. And I've said this in other videos. We've seen this in on Earth many times, and many governments have gone this road. Where they go moral relativist, and then the minority that the people don't agree with is they, they feel like they should just be killed, and they kill them. That's what Kamir is. That's what May is. These are people that are murdering people. So no, it's not okay to do that in any way, shape, or form. Sorry, sorry, no, don't buy it, dumb. And if that's what you were going for, that's really stupid. No one is looking at Kamir and being like, oh, the poor guy, he just wants to be free to use the Force to murder people, and the Jedi won't let him. Aw, poor Kamir. Like, no, no one's thinking like that. That's absolutely ridiculous. If he wanted to go use the Force how he wanted, that didn't involve killing people. It's a big galaxy. He could have went and done that. He didn't go kill Jedi. So no, nonsense. This show is ridiculous. Why does Soul feel a connection to Osha so immediately? And specifically, why does he feel like she's meant to be his be his Padawan? I wanted to keep some mystery around that. I wanted to definitely call back to Qui-Gon and Anakin. Qui-Gon almost immediately zeroes in on the potential that Anakin has. The specialness of Anakin, the exceptionalism of Anakin. But you have said, though, in another interview, the one with, with uh, the Mary Sue, that they're not powerful unless they're together. Like, that they're, like, half as powerful as Anakin because they had to split the one essence into two or whatever. And say it had to... And so it ended up being twins, and so they're not powerful. So why would he be like, oh, she's so special, when she's not even half of an Anakin? Like, this whole thing is retarded, man. It doesn't make any sense. This is the worst Star Wars ever, I, I, I think. Like, 
yeah, Ahsoka's boring and dumb and there's a lot of stupid stuff, but at least you could say, okay, that it's stupid, but it, I guess it kind of makes sense. This is total, total nonsense. I think Soul feels the same way about Osha. There's just something that he feels with his connection with the Force, her strength in the Force. You literally said they have to be together in another interview, Leslie. You don't even know what your own show is saying and is about. You're just making it up. Because I've said I've said this before, I think they just shot a whole bunch of crap. I don't think they had a proper storyline. And then they re-edited it, and it's a mush ma mash mess. The whole thing's ridiculous. From from the virgins that doesn't increase the Je the Jedi power but increases Anasea's power to this whole nonsense, even though she even said that they're weak in the Force unless they're together. But so then why would Soul even get... Like, it's on and on. Every single step of the way, it's just stupidity. What's going... How, how did they... With the witches and... Oh, it's awful. And I always wondered, having seen The Phantom Menace and seeing Qui-Gon behave the way he did, I did wonder, is this how it happened? Or do you just get matched up with somebody? And a much more compelling, interesting storyline is, as a Jedi Knight moving into Master, you identify your apprentice in a deep spiritual connection. Whether it's out in the world or at the temple, as opposed to being paired up with someone. I disagree entirely with that. In a way, it was like that for Qui-Gon. But it was more just, he once he figured out his midichlorians and everything, then he was like, whoa, okay, this is serious. But it, it wasn't that deep, other than just this guy could be the chosen one. When Obi-Wan trained Anakin, it wasn't a spiritual thing. He cared about him. He loved him. But it wasn't like, oh, it's, he's the chosen one. It was just there, just he cared about him. And so he took him on as his apprentice, like... I think that can happen. It can be spiritual. But it doesn't have to. And probably more often than not, it isn't. You're talking about like a Jedi Academy, all these kids and stuff. It's probably more likely that it isn't than it is. <laughs> right? It, it it can be, but come on. I'm glad you brought up Qui-Gon because I want to ask about Anakin. I think the connections between the twins and Anakin were obvious even before this episode. But I want to focus on their differences. Specifically this idea that their one consciousness splits into two bodies. Why would that make them stronger, a.k.a. the power of two and not weaker see this is where he presses her this is good oh oh he felt he felt you know it was like and she was it was like how Qui-Gon felt Anakin because of the of her power and then literally he says this is a good question why would that make them stronger exactly it's both the girls are guinea pigs there's patient zero for this sort of power it didn't work perfectly therefore the girls on their own can never be as powerful as Anakin their full potential together has to be explored. They've been separated too long. In other words, you just contradicted your whole previous thing you said. It's like when you're doing an experiment and it's found, and it's the first round of it. They are maybe not the first, but one of the first experiments of this particular power. Okay, so I kind of said in my last video, like, did we know that Anakin was like the first thing of this ever happening, this, this, this virgins thing? And I thought, you know what, it's possible that it could have happened in the past, right? Like, like, so it's not that big of a deal. And I also said, you know, that they had to use the dark side and stuff to make the twins, whereas Anakin was just the force. So I, I didn't think it took away. But now she's saying, okay, they are maybe not. Okay, are they the first or not, Headland? It's like when you're doing an experiment and it's the first round of it. They may, they are maybe not the first. Well, is it or isn't it? Is it the first round of it? Like, she doesn't know what she's doing, but one of the first experiments of this particular use of the of power. Is it one of the first, or is it the first round of it? You literally just mixed it all up in one sentence. If it is the first, then that does take away from Anakin quite a bit, actually. Not totally, but it does. Because now she's saying, I'm the first one. You know, my story was the first one in the timeline that did the Virgins, not George's. But again, in one sentence there, in one sentence, she completely, she can't just say what it is. She doesn't know. <laughs> she doesn't know anything about her own show. So the twins are weaker than Anakin for sure. They are going to fall short and what will eventually become the chosen one. They will never achieve what what that is because in my mind, Anasea could only do so much. She's not powerful enough to create one person. The twins split, Anasea's power split, and therefore a lot of her philosophy is about the power of two, about the fact that, she, that they must stay together, they must stay together. The twins are stronger together if she keeps them together. And obviously there's an analogy to this of the isolationist feeling, not just of the coven, but also of the family. If I can keep you safe. And I mentioned this in another video. Way to go. Like, so you made these twins 
So they could just rot in a, in a witch's coven on a planet with nothing in it. Way to go. Like, what was the point of it? The whole thing is stupid. It makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. And again, Soul, why would he care about Osha when she... Why would he feel that she's, like, super special when she isn't and has to be near her sister? They have to be together to even matter. It, and, and, and then if they do have to be together to be powerful, why was May able to to kill uh, Indara? And all the other Jedi, like, it, it doesn't, none of this makes any sense. This is why the Jedi blowing up this dynamic both in, in Episode 3 and 7 is so important to see, because Anasea starts to essentially go into this crisis as a parent. Of course, I know they need to stay together, but they also need to be their own person, so perhaps I need to let go of my own design and trust that this is what's meant to be, because what's the other option? Yeah, what's the other option? It's rotting away in a witch's coven on a planet that I force my children to be people they're not. Why are the twins the coven's future, and why would letting Osha go with the Jedi sacrifice their future? Why does a powerful coven of witches need new leaders anyway? Not unlike what I was just saying, that Anasea and the coven do believe, to the extent that the witches understand them, that the power of two will breed the power of many. <laughs> Remember the chant, guys? The corny chant in episode three? <laughs> the power of many! And then they're, like, massaging their invisible crystal balls. <laughs> Because, you know, crystal balls, that's not generic magic at all. That's really Star Wars-y. It's not even close to generic magic. Meaning that these two young girls will start a legacy that could actually grow and grow and grow and grow. <sighs> that's not answering the question. That is unlike the Sith who are going to operate with only two always, one to have the power and one to crave it. That dynamic and that balance is how the Sith stay around. Part of what the Coven wants, even if it's not what Anasea wants, is this legacy, this feeling of the two girls ascending into becoming the leaders of the coven, of being little Dalai Lamas they can worship. What? That they they would proliferate being able to create more children or being able to create, create more. The witches are powerful, very powerful, but they're only powerful together, as you can see with what happened with Kalnaka. They would not be able to do, be able to, one by one, do what they did with them. But they wouldn't be able to do that anyway unless they were on this planet. So that's the whole point of these witches is just to stay there and just keep making kids through the force? For what purpose? Because as soon as they leave, they, their force powers go down to diddly anyway. Here's the other question. How are, how are Osha and Anasea able to use the force off planet if they've only ever known it with this virgins? So, like, when they're training or whatever, when they're kids, and May's doing the, the force clench <laughs> against her mom, and it's like, wouldn't, if she left that planet, wouldn't she just become, like, super weak and wouldn't even be able to do that? Like, am I crazy here? Because she's using the force on whatever that Jedi outpost, whatever planet that was in episode, whatever, one and two. Why wasn't she weak then? Like, this whole show makes no sense, man. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Why did they all die when Indara freed Kalnaka? This was a big question when we were working on episode. To me, it was very important because it told two stories. One, that Indara, despite her being completely and utterly the consummate Jedi in this episode, I did feel it was important that she also misjudged something. If we were going to explore those themes, she couldn't just be this infallible Jedi. She also had to do something else going on with her. And I think what she did is, in the moment, in trying to sever the connection between Kanaka and the witches, she dealt with the power she did not understand and unfamiliar with. Um, I don't think she misjudged at all. Her friend is on a rampage uh, because these witches are evil and they put a spell on him. And he's going to kill her other friends. And so I don't care whether she knew about what the witches, what would happen or not. She did the right thing anyway. Like, sorry, Leslie. Like, if that's how you were trying to spin it, it doesn't spin that way on screen. It's She did the right thing regardless. Those witches were being very, very bad. They should not have done that. There was no reason to do that. And all of it stems from the fact that Anasea just happened. All of that happened because Anasea just wouldn't say, yeah, you can take Osha, guys. It's okay. <laughs> One line of dialogue and the whole episode's done after the first two minutes. But then we have all this stuff happen just because... Why would you say the one line that would stop the violence, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> Did she kill them? Yeah, she didn't know what was going to happen to them. So No, she didn't kill them. They killed themselves by d doing something stupid. So it wasn't intentional. No, she did not know. All she was thinking was, I have to save him. Again, it starts to become a selfish want. <laughs> what? 
I must save this colleague of mine. I have to do this. If I don't do this, then something terrible could happen to him. We've seen what they're capable of. I've seen them do this to my Padawan. They're now doing it to an, an incredibly powerful Jedi Master. What do I do? Okay, I'm going to make this decision. No, she just she's just saving her friend and her other friends from evil witches. What are you talking about? It wasn't a selfish want. It was a it was an easy decision. These people are being idiots and harming people. I'm going to do what I can to prevent that from happening because I'm a Jedi. She wrote the Jedi as good in this and then is trying to convince us in interviews after the fact that they were bad. Just like she's trying to explain all this other stuff that it doesn't say that in the show at all. And you're like, what? What are you talking about? She's just, this is the dumbest show ever. And no, the Jedi did nothing wrong. It was the witches who were selfish and doing something bad because they didn't want Osha to leave. And they were willing to kill everybody to do so. Her, Darth Mom was willing to kill all the Jedi to prevent her daughter from doing what she wanted to do. So they are the ones that are bad. Uh, but she doesn't know what the consequences of that decision will be. The same way that Sol doesn't know what his actions will mean for Osha's future. Torben doesn't really put it together but because he's so young that the consequences of his actions are going to lead... To all of this falling apart, Indara had to also make that mistake in order to continue exploring the idea. And again, Torben, the guy, the fact that he was suicidal for literally, basically just trying to save these kids after they realized that these witches were darksiders. <laughs> Sorry, man. And then also, you know, because he wanted to bring them back when all they had to do is just to call the Jedi and tell them that they had the same exact, like, metachlorian symmetry or whatever and that would prove that there's a virgin so no no one's meditating for 10 years just to commit suicide because of something like that that's totally ridiculous and a jedi certainly would never do that in fact i don't think a jedi would i don't think suicide is allowed in the jedi code let, let me know if i'm wrong about that but that sounds totally stupid uh coral says she would die before she let the jedi take her children then the jedi take osa osha so is it okay to assume she's dead because the episode definitely suggests she survived. Yeah, no body, no death. That's what I'll say about that one. Oh, so Darth Mom is probably still alive. Yay. Don't even care. Considering this angry, powerful, force-sensitive witch might be out there, and we also have this unexplained dark, powerful dark side user out there as well, is it possible that Coral and Kamir know each other? Oh, I can answer that. They do not know each other. But what I will say, as a tease, if we are able to explore this story more, her species will tell you a little bit about where she ends up. So she goes home to Dothamir? We know Anasea is right when she, when she says, someday these, these, those noble intentions you have will destroy every Jedi in the galaxy. But how exactly does she know that? It's just a prediction. No, no. The, noble intentions isn't what destroyed the Jedi. This is this whole thought, this whole marketing of the Jedi as stupid, bad, evil since Disney bought it is again this moral relativist perspective that Disney's been pushing and they push it in a lot of stuff right now. And no, they the reason that the Jedi died was because Palpatine was a master manipulator and he and he planned out something over like a 30, 40 year period. And was successful. And was patient. And dealt with things as they came. I hate how Disney has like... On one hand, they bring him back in The Rise of Skywalker, which has its own massive problems. To, to titillate everybody. But on the other hand, they completely downplay his role in taking over the Republic. And they give him no credit ever, and it's always all these showrunners and all the all the writers and everything. It's always, oh no, the Jedi were stupid and bad, and you know they just they they they're hubris and blah 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 blah. They don't ever give credit where credit is due. And when I was watching George's movies, that's what I look at. I'm like, holy crap, bro! This is the sickest villain of all time. He was so amazing at his plan that even all these Jedi couldn't figure it out. And he manipulated everybody on both sides. The Trade Federation, the, the New Republic, all those senators. He put in the work. This guy's crazy, amazing villain. No, it's the Jedi. They were It's their hubris. It's just so stupid, man. Okay, but how exactly does she know that? Yeah, the Noble Intention things. Is it just a prediction from a very smart person or is that comment related to the twins destiny i think she's seeing the way the jedi are reacting to her children and she may not know this exactly but she knows they will make the same mistake with anakin 
No, she just said that line so that because it's a prequel, she can make her sound smart by making some sort of premonition because we already know what's going to happen. That's all it was. Nothing more to it. When May asks for help, NSA not only starts dematerializing her own body, she makes May turn into a shadow as well. What can you tell us about what exactly is happening there and why? Yeah, why does May... Like, <laughs> it's so dumb. And I say his main concern is that violence will be used in this confrontation. Well, why doesn't she just say take Osha before it gets violent? She doesn't do that because it's got to have an episode with a bunch of lightsaber swings. Uh, NSA must have come from some place that utilized violence. <sighs> okay, it's something she would have... Something she would have seen when she was a child, something that she would have endured in her coming of age. So the main concern is obviously the, ch the children's safety, the safety of, excuse me, of her children, the physical safety of them, the secondary concern. I do not, do not want my children or my legacy to be affected by something violent. I want to remove them from whatever that is. Well, you married a violent person who pushes your daughter down hard, tells her to get angry and violent, and tells your coven to brandish weapons. And if you didn't want violence, why do you even have those weapons there? It just none of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. And then if why would you have her carry your babies, your force babies, when you know she's violent? Like none of it makes sense. None of it. The why about the dematerializing is the first thing that Jody and I talked about. The seating character, what she is doing is what Jackie says in episode four that it's an honor to see anyone transform into the force. That's not what... Trans I, I covered this in my other video. That's not what... Trans Obi-Wan transformed into the Force. What Anasea did was transform into some weird, dark side, black cloud. Headland, Leslie Headland does not know anything about Star Wars. So all con confuses May for Osha during the standoff right before she kills it. Right before he kills Anasea. Which is hilarious to me because they picked fraternal twins that look completely different <laughs> for the, for the when they're young. And then they picked one person to play identical twins when they're older. Like... <laughs> So the fraternal twins somehow grew into being identical. Because that's that's what happens in, in real life. <laughs> oh, my word. Uh, yeah, I have no idea why Soul would confuse them. They'd look completely different. What does that mix-up reveal about Soul, both in that moment and for his presumed connection? with It just means that, yeah, exactly. If he was connected to Osha, wouldn't he know right away? He was all like, oh, Osha this and Osha that. Oh, I love Osha. Oh, that's Osha. No, that's me, bro. It doesn't even look the same. <laughs> <laughs> These are good questions. This show's so stupid. That he doesn't know her as well as he thinks he does. Okay. That's that's a quick... <laughs> he, just, he just doesn't know her that well. Kamir has a similar reaction to Osha that Sol has. Sol has that Qui-Gon-Anakin connection with her. This is a powerful, Force-sensitive child. This child is meant to be my Padawan. I'm drawn to this particular power, which means I need to help this young woman reach her full potential as a Jedi. Kamir has the exact same experience... With her in episode two, the second Osha walks into the apothecary, he knows that it's not May. How is that the exact same experience? He literally just asked you why Soul is confusing Osha for May. And you're using Kamir knowing that it wasn't May, that it was Osha in the apothecary. That would mean Soul should also sense that it's May. It's, May. it's not Osha because of the connection. Like, she's just, this person is not intelligent. He can feel that this is something different, and he feel that he wants to reach her. Kamir wants to be part of her journey and reaching her full potential. What I think is interesting is that Kamir, and later the Stranger, never mistakes Osha for May, and Sol mistakes Osha for May at least twice. That's also meant to foreshadow who Osha's real master will be. Which, again, it doesn't... None of this makes sense. And you're in this Virgin's planet that should have heightened Sol's Force ability and Force sensitivity. There's no, there's no way he should have mistaken May for Osha. None of this makes any sense. This is the dumbest thing. And I love how she like sort of sort of padded off of Soul and went back to just talking about Kamir because she knows you can't explain that and it makes absolutely no sense. And her writing is dog do. <laughs> this is the worst show ever. And Dara thinks Soul is letting his emotion and feelings get in the way, but he insists that's not what is happening. Who's right? I think she's right as a Jedi. She's right in terms of the institution they're a part of. He's right because if you're not going with your instinct and your emotions when you're looking for a Padawan or feel children are in danger or sense the misuse of power, what else would you be relying on? Well, there's lots of things you could rely on. What are you talking about? When the Council says no in The Phantom Menace, Qui-Gon's like, I'll do it myself. He respectfully says no. Uh, what I wanted to explore here was we asked the Council, they said no, and everybody kind of going, we can't stand up, we can't say those things. 
What's great about Qui-Gon is that he's able to maintain his emotional sobriety while also advocating for his new relationship with his Padawan. Soul's not able to do that, but I don't think that's a flaw as a human. I think as a human or as a father, Soul is right. But I think as a Jedi, Andara is right. Those are the two sides of Soul that are in conflict here. I mean, I guess it's... I I think it's kind of overdone though. I I, I it's kind of off-putting how like intense he was about Osha because <laughs> we didn't get enough backstory there, and so yeah, it was easy to believe that Qui Gon was not emotional because Qui Gon had just met them, he wasn't invested yet, and so he's just talking and figuring out a plan to get him out of there and all that stuff. But with Soul, he like meets her and then immediately is like oh blah 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 blah. And you're like, why are you so intense about this this girl being your Padawan, bro? Calm down. Like, you, you just got here. Like, relax. So it was a little bit corny and dumb. Uh, with me talking about walking through fear and everyone being sacrificed to fulfill their destiny, was Soul correct that the girls were in danger? No, May, May misremembered what her, her mother said. Soul misinterpreted, but it's because the child did. He was believing what the child said and genuinely thought, well, she says sacrifice, so this is bad. But she's mis remembering what her mother said which is that you have to sacrifice a part of yourself i think the girls were in danger because they were being raised by a bunch of dark side witches like what's the what, what's complicated unless they had trying to like act like she wrote this like super comp complex show like oh it's all you know gray areas and good and bad and everyone and, and, and but what she actually gave us was no it's pretty obvious who the bad guys are like you can tell me in this interview what you want <laughs> but it's pretty obvious what were the natural desires torben was suppressing was he really homesick or was he missing someone or something instead? You know, it's too bad that they didn't expand on that. I, I, I said that in my review. I'm pretty sure that it's would have been nice if it wasn't just he wants to just leave because he's bored of doing this boring, dumb mission that droids should be doing. It's, they could have at least added in whatever. Not birthday or whatever. Think of something. Make it more deep than just, oh, yeah, I just want to go home because I'm bored. This is kind of a lame mission. Uh, it sucks. She never, like, all he had to say was one or two more lines around the fire. Just be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm missing this person or that person. No. She does She can't write, bro. So now in an interview, we're going to find out why he wanted to go home. Here we go. No, he wanted to go home. <laughs> Way to dig in, Leslie. At least she's owning it. I mean, it's terrible surfacey writing, but at least she's owning it. She's dug it in there. I like the idea. It just seems so human to me. I just want to go home. I don't want to be here anymore. Because, <laughs> you know, writing that one extra line of a, of a reason why is just too... A little more depth is just too much for her. Uh, where older, more experienced Jedi would understand how to stay within meditative states. How to put one foot in front of the other. How to stay in the moment. A young, undisciplined, unbalanced Padawan is still thinking... Uh, if I don't know when I'm leaving, how am I expected to stay here? He's missing a big lesson here, which is something that Indara... Uh, whatever. It's just so surfacy and crappy. She's very right that she can't just tell him that. I can see the viewers saying, well, just tell him that. But she explicitly says I have to teach him, blah, 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 whatever. It, it, it's, it's so surfacy. Episode 7 gives us a totally different perspective of what happened on Brendock compared to what we saw in Episode 3 when May tells Osha, I'll kill you. Did that actually happen, or is that Osha misremembering? Well, other than, like, 50% of the episode just being, like, the same scenes from a different angle. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. It costs $22 million. $22 million an episode. <laughs> Where did the money go? Laundering. Uh, we talked about this a lot in the writer's room. There was a healthy discussion about, do you utilize this kind of language as a child? And I said, I think... So, yeah, I remember when I was a little kid, I have two sisters, I have a younger brother, we said insane things to each other, just absolutely wild, crazy things. I don't think it got to that level of violence, of course, but I don't think May means that at all. She doesn't mean she's actually going to kill the sister. But we did talk about the fact that possibly Osha is misremembering it because she felt so threatened in that moment, so I'd leave it up to the viewer. No, what? What? In episode 7, where you show sort of the finality of what happened in episode 3, even though really nothing changed. Like, really, the... Pretty much everything we saw happen in episode 3, we just got a few additions in episode 7. Nothing really changed. She does try to kill her. What are you talking about? There's no way May lit that thing on fire and locked Osha in that room just to burn down the coven she wanted to live in for the rest of her life and was mad that Osha didn't want to live in. She was trying to kill her. 
So whether she said it or not, she was. What are you talking about, Leslie? She just doesn't... Why don't you just say, yes, she said it? Why are you trying to make it all complicated and deep when it isn't? It's the most, like, lowbrow, basic stuff ever, and you're trying to, like, convince us it's comp- complex when it isn't. With everything in this show. Will we learn whether Kamir is truly a Sith or not? He is. She said in interviews before the show came out that they're exploring the Sith. That's what she said. Why do people keep pretending that he's not a Sith? He is. And he wields a red lightsaber and he kills Jedi and he does everything Sith. You hope he's not a Sith. See how creative I am? No, he is. What I will say is you don't hear it from his mouth, but there are a couple of small things that happen that intimate the answer to that. You said you were exploring the Sith, even though you don't do a whole lot of that exploration. You said you were doing that before the show came out, Leslie. We all know. Why are you trying to make it complex when it isn't? Will we learn if Kamir has any connection to the Knights of Ren? That's a theory I've been working on all season. Tedlin sits there with a long pause. It's a really good theory. What an interesting theory. What an amazing... That's wow, wow, wow. If they do that... (laughs) The the, the Knights of non-Sith. Kylo Ren's not a Sith, even though his master was trained by a Sith. And does all Sith things, and they and uses Force lightning, and he does everything Sith do, and has a red lightsaber, and kills people, and seeks power, and literally does everything Sith do. But it's not a Sith. Look at how creative I am. My name is Ryan Johnson. I did not make a Sith. Look at me. My name is J.J. Abrams. It is a non-Sith, even though it is a Sith, and does everything Sith do. But it's not a Sith, because we are so creative, and we can write villains that are not Sith, even though they are. But they're not, because we can write really new, cool villains. <laughs> what aspect of the series will prove important in the finale do you think people haven't focused on enough to this point that's a good question I haven't been following the coverage of the show enough to really answer that I did hear that there was a bit of a dust up in terms of the girls stepping on Anakin's creation storyline which I had mixed feelings about which again I've already said it to me it doesn't step on it as much as people think although it is super stupid it's probably for another deep dive to kind of talk about that I would say that you might be missing the forest through the trees Starting an argument about that instead of seeing that this is a power that could have existed in the world before Anakin, way before Anakin, and that power was being pursued by someone, so it's not an issue of paying attention to, but I did hear about that, blah, blah, blah. If there's anything we know about the fifth, about the f- fifth in Sith in sequels or prequels, one of the things we do know about them is their quest for these abilities, like we're seeing NSA being able to execute with the twins. It just seemed to me any power like that that does not belong to one faction it is not something that nsa was born with either it's a power that belongs to the force and that it's up to the practitioner and that's what i was saying it's still different from anakin and it's it's an unnatural using of the force to create the girls whereas anakin was a natural force thing anyway this one's for me i've been waiting many years for darth Plagueis to show up do you know how the whole story of the galaxy far far away from the acolyte to him training palpatine connects yes i do if I continue to tell to get to tell this story, I know how I would like to play it out, and I would say I think it's pretty complicated and messy. It, it, I think she she does want to do the Plagueis thing, and I think if you if you go by that this is a hundred years before the rise of the Empire, which would be Revenge of the Sith, then I think Plagueis is like twenty in his late twenties in this. I have no doubt in my mind, and I think in Episode Seven there's rumors there's or ep- Episode Eight I should say I think there is going to be. We are going to see Kamir Sith Lord, whether it's Tenebris or whoever it is. Um, or we might see some of the other sort of, whatever it was, the five or six other potential apprentices of Plagueis. Um, like uh, maybe Darth, uh, what is it, Rampage? Darth Ramage? I'm trying to remember. Um, anyways, I, we, we are probably going to see something like that at the very, very end to titillate us so that she can get her second season. Um, she doesn't know her own show. Uh, it's clear she's sort of making it up as she goes along. I think she made it up as she went along, which has led to a pretty piss poor show. I think it's the worst Star Wars entity ever. I think it's worse than the holiday special in the sense that at least the holiday special, you know, it's stupid and you go into it. This was, this was something that was apparently taken very seriously, but yet not seriously enough for her to even understand her own story. So it's a complete disaster. What a mess. What a joke. I can't wait for episode 8 to come out because it's going to be hilarious. you got to laugh at this stuff, guys. It's so stupid. I can't believe it. She, she's trying to explain stuff and then contradicting herself in literally the same sentences in this interview. 
Let me know in the comment section what you think. Uh, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. Oh, sub to the channel. Feel free to check out everything else on my channel. Have a good day.